Good morning, colleagues. My name is Anastasia Alexandrovich. I represent the Belarusian Press Club. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today in our broadcast. I would like to thank our journalist colleagues. Today, we'll are joined by Rehor Stapiena, who is a director of the Belarus Initiative for Chatham House, to talk about what Belarusians think about on the amendments to the Constitution. The survey was conducted at the beginning of February, so without further ado, I uh, give floor to Rehor, and we work in the format uh, where we first have the presentation by Rehor, and then we have a Q&A session. You're welcome to use any channels for that. Thank you, Rehor. Thank you, Nastya. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Press Club, for organizing this press conference. Of course, we understand that this referendum uh, was happening in a, well, it is a bit special, actually. And uh, this special aspect is becoming even more special. So, but still we are in for a referendum, so we and would like to share with you the data we acquired during our presentation. Our referendum from the mirror world. So we conducted at the beginning of February, 855 people took, took place in it. It's uh, proportional to the urban population of Belarus in terms of age. It was uh, 755 people. We had a little bit of imbalance towards the more socially active people. In other words, the people who were probably opponents of the Lukashenko regime. On the other hand, we consider all the aspects that could influence the result. As usual, we publish the, our present presentation uh, in uh, as a Excel file and CAWI file that you can work with through the SPSS. It is used to, to analyze the data. If there are some questions regarding the methodology, you are welcome to ask them. Particularly, it's possible to do during the Q&A session. I think I just saw somebody else's screen. It was uh, by Natalia or something. Indeed. I can go back to my presentation now. Yes. Um, sorry, Natalia. Assumed the co-host rights, I guess. So anyway, let's continue. So what do they think in Belarus about the upcoming referendum? Or what did they think about it at the beginning of February 2022? First and foremost, I must say that Belarusians do know about the referendum. And uh, at the beginning of February, Belarusians mostly, most of them understood that the preparation was going on, but they didn't know much about the time when it will be conducted. So there are some people who are some apolitical and they never heard about it, but there are very few of them. I'm sorry, we don't see your presentation. Something is off here. Please, let's try again. Can you see it now? Well, I don't, maybe somebody else does colleagues could you comment on that no we cannot see the presentation it's some internal bug i guess of zoom because uh, we can see that the, we have a sc the screen so we don't see the presentation no we don't but what can I say? I can uh, re-enter the Zoom session. I'm sorry, colleagues, for these technical difficulties, but we'll be back with you in a second. Yeah, 
As I said, we are experiencing technical difficulties. Our expert uh, is re-entering Zoom. We'll try to relaunch his presentation. Good afternoon, everyone. Once again, I need a couple of seconds to turn on the presentation. Фантастический случай, коллеги. Рыгор в чате прислал ссылки. Я продолжу. That's a problem we don't really encounter often. Anyway, I'm sending to you the the link to the presentation in the Google Drive. Я даже не знаю, что делать в таком случае. Да, может быть, мы попробуем, Рыгор, демонстрировать твою трансляцию с другого какого-то. Well, let's try and use another device to show your presentation. Yes, we can see. Colleagues, once again, I'm sorry for the technical difficulties we experienced. Anyway, let's go back. Let's go back to the referendum. We also asked people about whether they were going to take place, to take part in the referendum. They said yes. The turnout will be less, uh, a lower figure, will have lower figures than the presidential election. But at the beginning of February, many people did say that they would participate based on the fact that all political actors appeal on Belarusians to or urge them to take part in this election campaign and uh, come to the polling stations. It is also important to understand that when we say that uh, people will, would come to the polling station, it means that this is one of the few opportunities for them to express their political will that, have a, that they have remaining. So it is something. Also, we asked them question about the attitude to the amendments to the constitution. What we see is that Belarusians are the, do not expect any changes or they are not sure. It's important to highlight both of the answers. First one being that uh, the, uh, the first group of the people, the majority of them, believe that uh, nothing will change the constitution. I mean, in the constitution would not change anything. And uh, uh, some people believe that the, the political system will become more free or more just after the changes. And uh, they also believe that, uh, do, do not believe the constitutional reform change the political crisis. Also, we asked them about the awareness of the content of the proposed new constitution. And uh, we see that uh, several weeks before the Pride referendum, uh, many urban dwellers of Belarus said that uh, they uh, have seen the new draft of the constitution. We also asked them about their attitude to reward responsibility from the president 
for their actions while in office once uh, they are no longer in power. We ask them this question. How would they vote? And we see that the majority of Belarusians are against of removing responsibility from the president for their actions while in office for the crimes they have conducted. We also asked them the question about the All Belarusian People's Assembly, APA. And we saw that a number of people that know something, have heard something about this body, is about a quarter of all the respondents. Also, since we conducted the research about a year ago, similar research, we can compare the data about the APA then and now. So again, the idea is that the the APA was assembled then, it's not assembled now. So it could be an important body. We don't know what, how exactly it functions. Anyway, we'll see just one fourth of all the respondents say that they know something, they heard something about the APA. The next, there are a few questions about how people, what people consider the APA to be, and uh, many of them think that uh, don't think that APA is an effective tool for posturing dialogue between the government's opponents, and uh, the decision of the APA can be trusted, and the APA succeeds at representing the all Belarusians. We see that compared with the January 2021, the number of people who are not sure about this has grown. Possibly it has to do with the fact that the number, the uh, fear factor has grown in Belarus. Overall, we see that the image of the APA as a board uh, remains negative for the majority of Belarusians. We also have surveyed the intentions regarding ac actions to defend your vote in the referendum, people's vote in the referendum. That's a very sensitive question. and. Uh, well, we have to treat these results carefully. But what we see is that uh, indeed uh, the protest potential in, in my, is still there in the population. It's not as great as it used to be, but it remains. Although the majority of people are not ready to undertake anything to protect their voice in case the, the referendum is rigged or they are not sure about that. Uh, I'm going to show you the last slide now uh, about what Belarusians think about a possible war between Ukraine and Russia. As I said, we surveyed this at the beginning of February. And then at the time, there were a lot of um, fears that uh, there could be a, a fully fledged war breaking out between Russia and Ukraine. What exactly, exactly that's what happened. And uh, what we uh, got is that the Belarusians don't believe this is normal. Majority of Belarusians don't believe it's normal for Belarus to send professional contracts always to Ukraine. They don't believe that Belarus should support this STO ally Russia by sending soldiers to Ukraine. The majority of Belarusians think that uh, Bill should take a neutral position in the event of a war between Ukraine and Russia. And uh, uh, they believe that the uh, Belarusian conflict must not die in war between Russia and participation in the war between Ukraine and Russia would be a disaster for Belarus. So the potential support of uh, Belarus for Kremlin was not popular among Belarusians. Here again, there are some conclusions that uh, I have already spoke about. It, it is that the majority of Belarusians know about the upcoming referendum, that they are planning to take part in it, even though the uh, the number, the polling stations will be lower. They don't know much about the changes and amendments. They don't know how it will affect their lives, or they don't expect any amendments at all. At the same time, the majority of Belarusians did, did not have a chance to understand what was what was taken in pl 
place inside the new amendment, but they're quite negative about this, negative about the APA. As to the APA, uh, they don't know much about it still. This image is negative. Or, and last but not least, in case of possible or conflict between Russia and Ukraine, Belarusians would want Belarus to be neutral. Let's actually it for me. We intentionally made this survey shorter to be able to answer questions about the referendum. Uh, it's relevant as it still is, but I'm happy to answer any questions as you still or might have, and I'm be happy to show additional slides or comment further of them. i stop here. Thank you. We have a question from uh, Alexandra, or represented Deutsche Welle. Did you compare the data about the Belarusian's attitude to work with the data from 2014, if you know about them? And what? how did the attitude of Belarusians to the war in Ukraine changed? Uh, then in 19, 2014, the SEPI made a research conducted research that showed the same figures we are witnessing now. Uh, the fact that Belarusians believe that uh, Belarus uh, should not take part in the possible conflict, what's uh, the uh, ongoing conflict between Ukraine and Russia. I think you can find this data at the Nisepia website. I'm sorry. That's a strange day today. Then and now Belarusians don't think that Belarusian, Belarus should be an actual participant in that. Alexander, you may, do you have any more questions? Any further questions? Feel free to ask. Um, who do Belarusians support in this conflict? Do you have any date on that? I think that uh, we never actually uh, asked Belarusians about that. That's uh, quite a day today. I'm sorry about that. It was too early to ask people about that. But we're planning to ask this question very soon. And uh, we'll have data uh, who builders and support. I know that this data, other researchers have this data. I cannot name them, but they did conduct a research about the attitude of Belarusians to the annexation of Crimea. We know that the attitude is changing there. A few people than in the past uh, believe that it, war in Crimea was just. Uh, now the question is, do Belarusians want to be participant or can they be forced to do that? Is it real that the Belarusian troops will participate in the Ukraine's conflict? Without a doubt, we don't have sociological data about this, but it's clear that Belarusian territory is used uh, to conduct aggression against Ukraine. And uh, the scenario where our troops will be used against Ukrainians is also possible. What we see here uh, Belarusians will not support this. I have uh, the unique presentations we've had for months, actually. But I'm ready to answer the next question. The question from Radio Razia, uh, are there preparations to mobilize Belarusians to prepare them for uh, fighting in Ukraine, are preparing such research? My colleagues are 
conduct a sociological experiment right now. The idea here is that Belarusian community may have a protest going on in Cascade. So if a small protest has started, and this protest may grow exponentially. Colleagues, do you have any more questions? I don't see any more. We do have something, yes. And um, can you show us the slide about the intention to defend their voice? Yes, let's go back to the slide. So why are you talking about the protest potential, even though we, there are 10% there? That's a question about this slide. It's important to understand that the mass repression that were conducted in Belarus, and some people say that there are still people inside the country, and we conduct research only among the people who are inside Belarus right now. We see that even now there are people who say that they're ready to sign petitions so they're ready to take part in the protest actions in other words it shows that this potential exists still exists is still there without a doubt this potential many times uh, lower than it was in 2020 because i have unpublished data from uh, summer 2020 there we show that the the protest potential at the time was much higher. 40% was in for signing petitions, 30% was for taking part in the protest. We must also consider the fact that people very often overestimate their abilities to participate in protest. And it's evident around across the board that in Russia, people very often say that we're ready to participate in protest when the authorities misbehave, but it comes down to the protest. People don't show up. Alexandra, do you have any more clarifying questions? No, thank you. And I guess the last question, I guess, So, uh, do referendum, do Belarusians support the boycott or two ticks, or it doesn't matter anymore? Or oh, we see that the people are planning to take part, or they were planning to do that at the beginning of February to take part in the, in the voting. Uh, consequently, we need to be considering this. At the same time, we must say that. Uh, considering the fact that the idea of two ticks, even though it was supported by the majority of the democratic forces, on the other hand, we understand that some democratic forces, uh, they said something else, that people could do whatever they wanted uh, uh, or part of the political actors did not make the uh, position about the referendum public. So, I guess Belarusians will be in, in the majority. They'll be choosing between the vote against and the two ticks. But that's again my speculation. We never asked people about that. And we conducted the, we'll conduct a research after the referendum is held and we find out for sure. Rigor, when should we expect the your research regarding the military actions. I mean, give or take, will it happen after the referendum? What will be prioritized? I believe we'll try to do it as fast as possible, but you must understand that we also, under the pressure of all these activities, and there's a problem that the situation is changing rapidly. A lot of things, if we hold the survey, let's say, in a week or two, we'll get the data 
uh, within three weeks and we'll publish it uh, in four weeks time so until then we can find ourselves in a totally different political reality that we are finding ourselves now so without a doubt we're trying to do our best and work as fast as possible but considering the fact that we uh, where we are where we are and some issues are also possible on our, on our part thank you Rahul. thank you colleagues for finding time YouTube, the YouTube broadcast will be available at the Press Club YouTube channel. If you want to read the slides, they're available in the chat. And uh, as I understand, the slides will also be published somewhere in total, without a doubt. I have published them in my Telegram channel, considering the fact that it is a little difficult to publish all the things uh, fast we'll probably publish them on monday but they're already available you can ref refer to them they're totally official and so on and so forth so uh, please um you can find them at my telegram channel or somewhere else at the website we'll be sharing further great friends thank you very much for joining our broadcast today uh, where we were joined by Stapenia, the head of the Belarus initiative chatham house please follow our announcements i mean those of the press club for future events and uh, peace out thank you very much everyone and uh, have a great day